So yeah, my name is Yahaya Mekori. It's my pleasure today to speak on the topic, narrowing down game development in Africa, the new frontier. Uh, all of us are, of course, are witnesses to the COVID pandemic. And we know how that disrupted basically our understanding of entertainment and how we have consumed products in terms of entertainment, whether it's music, whether it's film, games, or whatever. Uh, most of us who are involved in games, mostly live games, uh, we witness the cancellation of almost all the games across the globe. And that obviously led to a change in our uh, consumption pattern. Uh, Games, of course, became a big thing. Esports became a big thing. So many people turned to games or esports as a way to quench their thirst for sports and all types of games. Uh, of course, that whole shift and the growth in how other types of games, mobile games, uh, esports, how all these are consumed uh in order to either create leisure or to entertain ourselves have basically changed the narrative about the essential element of this industry um if you look at the african population we're talking about a population of 1.3 million people 1.3 billion people with about 70 percent under the age of 35. Uh, that is a huge uh large market uh, games which have been popular with us in the early 80s, 90s are Sega, PlayStation, uh, and you can name a lot of them. FIFA is big in Nigeria. The NBA 2K, it's coming on life. So Africans have been big consumers of games, gaming, and esports. Uh, now, with the change in our consumption pattern, and with the cancellation of live games, and with the... Um, durability or the duration of, East, of of the COVID not known to anybody. We do not know exactly or people do not know exactly when things are going to go back to normal in terms of the games or live games. Uh, the other as well is that with the shift in consumption taste, people assume or believe that things will never go back to just live games. People are still going to consume uh, the technology-based games which are used to as opposed to the physical games uh, which we are used to. Uh, side by side with that is what the opportunity lies for Africa who suffers from unemployment uh, or underemployment, from poor industry, and so many other things that bedevil the African continent with so much potential and so much uh, uh, skilled labor to give out to the global economy. And so uh, for us to be able to understand a bit more about gaming, we've taken back to context. Games, for example, have not been new in Africa. Uh, uh, games, uh, there's a popular game called Ayo. Ayo is basically a game curved out of wood. It's a board game curved out of wood that has 12 holes and uh, 48 beads, which I used to play across um, uh, the, the board. Uh, our research shows that that game was very, very popular in West Africa, Central Africa, and uh, across most of Africa. Um, again, before the Romans started playing board games to pass away time when they were trying to conquer the rest of the world, Egypt already was known for their board games. In short, uh, one of the pharaohs uh, and King Nefertiti were known to play those games as some of their favorite ways to pass their time. So games have not been new to Africa. Uh, all across Africa, there are different forms of But the question is that in this renewed uh, effort for um, for the for the gaming industry or for the games industry, what has happened to all those games that were initiated or were discovered by the Africans? I think what has happened is this: is that Africans have not been able to um, piggyback on technology to scale up uh, the games they developed, some which are over 200, 300 years ago. And of course, uh, with the huge uh, opportunities there, it becomes a big key issue, a disturbing issue if we are just key consumers uh, of these products or these services without becoming partakers in the global economy that drives this industry. i just put this into context again. Let's look at what's happening in, uh, in South Korea. Last year, South Korea exported $6.4 billion worth of games and services. And that is a huge amount of money 
for a country of barely 30, 40 million people. And yet, who put together the whole African continent, with 54 countries, uh, 1.3 billion people, 70% under 35, are not able to account for even one tenth of that value of the industry. So, um, in short, to add more context to it, it says that games industry alone accounted for 8.8% uh, surplus of South Korea's uh, trade uh, uh, surplus. So that just shows how much uh, is involved in, in this industry. Again, we need to look at other uh, com uh, companies who are already playing dominant roles in the African continent. We look at Facebook, look at YouTube, we look at uh, Amazon. All of these huge media companies have large and significant presence in Africa. And yet, Africans have not been able to be major players in this huge industry. And of course, <laughs> several things account for the difference, depending, of course, on where you go to. If you go to South Africa, um, what they have found out in South Africa is this. They have had probably the biggest success, uh, though minuscule uh, compared to other bigger companies like Zynga or even, uh, or even Secret, uh, Secret Garden. You know? uh, part of the reason why South Africa is reputed to have achieved is simply because of their uh, Western culture. And of course, because of that, they didn't have to, they have not had to, uh, uh, to play to any kind of local market or to bring any kind of African themes that are highly localized. But what we found out is that because of the Western nature of their culture, it has basically appealed to almost everybody globally. Uh, some of the games that have been biggest, have been the biggest success so far in Africa uh, include Desktop Dungeons, uh, we also have Brew Force. We have Rayman Festa Rum. These are reputed to be the biggest success stories in terms of the games industry in Africa. You can compare that to Nigeria, which has a company called Malio. Malio is probably the biggest story so far in Africa, in Nigeria, which has about 50,000 subscribers. Uh, again, we can go to Kenya. Kenya has several other companies uh, which are involved in that. There's a company called uh, Black diamond games there's a company that produced nairobi x and then also produced a game called kukusami of course these games were basically themed uh there were games built around african themes um uh, with substantial buzz in the press but in commercial terms those have not been successes in short they are not even considered successes when compared to their peers in terms of uh, other countries like south, south korea or asia or the United States of America. So how does, this, uh, how does this become an opportunity or a challenge, depending on how you want to look at it? Uh, some of the reasons why we have not had a, a very functional or commercially viable uh, gaming industry, I uh, think is simply because of several other things. And we'll go through them one by one. Uh, part of the problem we have is the issue of infrastructure. Um, one is mobile games. So most Africans play their games through mobile games. Uh, and what that simply means is this, is that it does not afford them the opportunity to have the full experience of a proper game. That's one. Another thing with, um, with the mobile games as well is that sometimes you're not able to, uh, to provide the 3D functions that normally come from watching uh, those games or playing those games on other gadgets like laptops or iPads or other well-known used gadgets against across Africa. Second thing as well is second issue to deal with has to do with the issue of phones. Uh, while we all use mobile phones, most of the phones are future phones and not uh, capable, don't have enough storage facility, do not have enough capacity to show, um, uh, to allow people to enjoy those games. Again, that's a challenge. Another issue people have had has to do with the issue of the inability to commercialize or to monetize their games. So in-app uh, spending becomes very, very hard. And so many of them have had to resort to subscription-based models. And because of that, uh, because of that, they have had to also use multiple platforms like Facebook and like um, Instagram and several other uh, platforms like that which primarily cater and market to a bigger global audience. So for most of the game developers, this is what they have really had to face. 
So infrastructure wise, that has been a big challenge in them being able to uh, commercialize or monetize their games. Another problem has to do with the shortage of data. Uh, data research or market data is not sufficient for them to know exactly who to cater with, how to develop the games, what games are, are, are based on scenario-based uh, games, or what games are based or should be mobile, what games should be app-based. So the lack of data as well has not been able, has been a big uh, uh, problem for most developers to be able to uh, customize or to build games that fit the African market. Another issue we have against the issue of, of credit card. First of all, we also know that uh, credit cards are not readily available across Africa. Outside of South Africa and a few other privileged people, uh, very few people have access to uh, credit cards. And what that simply means is that they're unable to make the right payments. They've had to just fall or resort to subscription-based models using sometimes airtime. Of course, we believe that with the availability of, uh, of, of different payment methods, eventually we're going to see integrations in that respect. But then there have been a substantial problem with credit cards, which are most suited for this kind of uh, engagement. Um, but beyond the issue of what we have in terms of infrastructure, the, the technology, we have to look at bigger issues. Um, part of it is lack of skills. Skills acquisition is a big issue. Uh, there's no sufficient, there are independent companies which have tried to build uh, or to take into, uh, to take into account or to build on the opportunities that this industry portends. But then the ecosystem is not large enough to accommodate all the other uh, collateral skill sets that are required to make this uh, to work. In terms of, and that, what I mean by that is in terms of packaging, in terms of technology, marketing, distribution, so you have independent people relying on just mobile telco, telcos or telcos to help push their product. And of course, catering to smaller, smaller markets, uh, they have not been able to get the kind of, um, uh, the kind of tr traction that is required to get them uh, into the marketplace. So all together, put together, we have an African market that's barely up $300, $400 million in terms of valuation compared to South Korea alone, which accounts for a yearly export of $6 billion. Another thing uh, some of the developers have faced has to do with the issue of funding. Of course, African countries are more inclined to funding film, music, and other types of uh, entertainment-based uh, services and products, but they do not see game development as part and parcel of uh, this uh, growing industry. Another Issue again is ecosystem, having the right skill sets. I mean, working with people uh, who can help develop, guide them, help with the development of these games. Uh, that said, uh, there are, of course, a few things which, if people latch onto or explore, they're bound to be able to take advantage of this industry. One thing you need to take note is that in Africa, there are lots of developers, and the other thing going for African developers is that labor is affordable. So the cost of, of hiring one developer in Europe can probably fit 10 to 15, even not 20 uh, developers in Africa. The cost of labor is very low and their costs as well generally are low. And so for bigger companies trying to look into the, the continent for cheaper labor, I think that's one major thing that Africa developers have to offer. Another thing is as well is to look at how uh, they can help bring out some of the themes that drive African consumption and see how they can uh, uh, converge that or put that together with what uh, traditionally European or international people are used to. I think we can uh, round up this session by highlighting the key issues that we need to change uh, for this market to grow, to blossom. Like we said earlier on, it's a huge market. It has potentials. Uh, the availability of mobile phones makes everybody, it uh, accessible to almost everybody. Uh, the African countries, some of the African countries already have 5G network, when in Europe, some are still struggling with 3G network. And so some of the key things, I think, uh, create opportunities for those who want to tap into this market. One is the market, uh, is the size of the market, is a huge market. 
the youthful demographic which people can use to sell. Thirdly, Africans are consumers of popular culture. And so part of what we might need to do is see how we can harness those global popular culture with what is localized here. Another thing that uh, presents a set of opportunities for game developers, especially those who have funds to put into it, to, feed, uh, to put into it, is to see how they can develop local skills, local people, schools, training sessions, courses. These are all part of the value chain which can be explored by different people who occupy different uh, parts of the value chain. Another thing is creation of hubs. In recent times, we've had so many tech hubs being created. Um, Microsoft has invested in a couple of those hubs uh, across Africa. And what you, could see, what you can potentially do is to see how we can um, stimulate the inclusion of game developers, apart from just software developers, game developers who participate or work in those hubs to take advantage of all the other facilities that are readily available to other developers in other industries. Another thing is press. Uh, I think, again, what has happened is that we've not had big press coverage or some of these loud, beautiful games that have African uh, descent. We have seen a couple of uh, ma magazines like Tech Hub, uh, Tech Cabal, and even BBC. BBC has been in the forefront of pushing out uh, some of these uh, breakthrough games. But again, that coverage has not given the kind of leverage that is needed. So we need the participation of media. And for media companies who are already involved in pushing out uh, this industry, it's important for them to start looking at the uh, African market to see who they can work with, what they can produce, and what they can push. Um, again, we might have to explore exchange programs, and, and that is very, very key in terms of software. Kenya has become a hub for, for, for coding, for software development. Again, we can see how exchange programs happen between African developers and those who uh, are in much more um, organized global uh, companies. But I think last but not the least, uh, what we need to look at is to see how the big media companies who already, who already have an African presence, like I said, uh, uh, Microsoft, Facebook, how they can probably create hubs that cater uh, uh, purposely cater to the gaming development, uh, gaming developers. And that could be by creating different hubs entirely or integrating this into already what they have functioning. So the big companies have a big role to play in pushing the increase or the growth of this industry. But let's take me to my final take, the new frontier, gaming development in Africa. We might just need to ask ourselves what it means to be an African gaming developer. Does that mean creating games that have African themes that primarily, primarily cater for the African uh, consumer, or we're looking at Africans working side by side with the multinationals to create employment opportunities for them, or to look at how to redefine what Africa means entirely. But one thing for certain is this, with the deficit in all of the things I've enumerated before, we need to have a different look about how Africans engage in this sector. I think we need to look at it from the point of African games, that's one. Secondly, ensuring that African developers are integrated into the development program of much more popular games. And thirdly, that African uh, economies have hubs that cater for that, and that even if they're not the primary developers, uh, African economies are benefiting from the collateral opportunities that uh, abound in the gaming industry. Uh, so that's my take on it, uh, on narrowing the gap. We think we can narrow the gap. It's a huge market, the opportunities, the developers, uh, labor is cheap. All we need is just funding, training, and engagement with big companies who have been involved in pushing up different successful games across the globe.